Christy, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawns Hang In There and a Bug Deal. So I've stamped out the images I'll be using on some Nina Solar White cardstock with black licorice ink, and I will be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my sloth, and for the fur, I'm using E42, E43, and E44. I'm going to begin by laying in some shadows with that E44, mostly along the bottom side of his body, and then also on the insides of the legs that are on the opposite side of his body. And then I'll begin to blend that out with the E43. So I'm just coloring in kind of little circular motions to pull that ink out and create a smooth transition. I'm also going to fill in the legs on the opposite side since they would be cast in a much deeper shadow. And then I will bring in the E42 to finish him up, still continuing to scrub over the edge of that E43 to break up the, uh, the line there so I have a nice smooth blend, and then filling in the rest of the area that remains. And to keep that nice and smooth, I am going to go back over all of that area with a second layer, especially since he's one of the larger images here. So I just have a nice smooth blend and I don't see any harsh lines. You can still see a little bit there um, with that first layer, but that second layer is going to really help cover that up and also just increase the saturation of the marker colors as well. So I'm just quickly going back over that, really nice and simple. All the colors are laid in for me, so all I have to do is just go back over them. Only takes a minute to do. And then for his face, I'm just going to go a step down. So I'm now using the E41, E42, and E43. So he'll still look, you know, like all cohesive, everything is gonna match, but it'll just be like a shade lighter. So I'm blending in the center with the E41, and then for the dark patches around his eyes, I'm still keeping in the same color family, but I'm going to really beef it up by using the E44, E47, and E49. I'm keeping that E49 on the sides of his face so that the part where his eye is has that nice light shade so it doesn't get too dark. Then I'm going to also use these same shades to color in the top of the cupcake. I thought that this color combination really does a good job to look like chocolate. So I'm doing a little chocolate ganache on top of the cupcake. Then I'm moving on to my branches. I wanted something that would look really aged and um, just ancient, something that would look perfect in a rainforest type setting. So I went with the E70s because they're like a grayish. It's a little brown, a little gray. So it's just a really cool combination um, for kind of like an old weathered tree. So I started with the E77 on the bottom and I'm blending up with the E74. And then I'll use a little E71 and just saving the E70 to do the cut ends. And then the second tree branch I did exactly the same, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that one off screen. Then I'm moving on to the little bug, which is going to be the sloth's friend in this little scene. He's going to be coming to the sloth's birthday party. So I'm doing him in warm grays using W3, W5, and W7. I'm putting the darkest color on the bottom and back side of his body and then blending forward toward his face with the mid-tone and the highlight. And then I needed something a little bit bright on there, so I'm going to use some yellows. I'm going to do the bottom part of my cupcake with Y13, Y15, and Y17. Also just putting the darkest at the bottom and blending upward. For the leaves, I'm using G21, G24, and G28. 
So I'll start with the one on top of the cupcake. I'm not going to color all of them on screen because they are exactly the same. I decided I wanted a little brightness at the tip of the leaf, so I brought in the G20. And then I'll color a few of the leaves with those shades and also one of the stripes on the party hat. And then the other green combination I'm using is YG01, YG03, and YG05. So I have a nice bright fresh leaf color as well. I think these um, two combinations go well together and they also really match the pattern paper that I'll be using. So then I'm going to take a black gel pen and go over the sloth's eyes just to really brighten those up and I'll trim all of these images out with the matching dies. For my focal panel, I've taken a piece of the Spring Fling 6x6 pad and trimmed that down with the Lawn Fawn Large Stitch Rectangle Stackables. I'm going to adhere that to a piece of white cardstock just to give it a little bit more stability so that I can pop this up later on on my card. Then I'm going to take the reverse stitched scallop square windows and I'm going to trim out a window from that. So I'll just pop that out of the pattern paper. I'm using a scrap of green cardstock to stamp my sentiment using Noble Fur ink. So I'm going to ink that up and stamp that down uh, twice to make sure that I get a really good impression. And then I will also pop my card base in my Misty and I'm going to stamp out the sloth once again with the sentiment that says, take it easy. And I stamp that down twice as well. And then I decided that he needed a little friend just like on the outside of the card. So I grabbed another little bug image and stamped that down in the top right corner. To begin assembling my card, I've taken another piece of pattern paper from the Spring Fling 6x6 and I've trimmed that down into a large square and I'm going to glue that down to my card front. I've also added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel. So I'm peeling off the release papers from that and then I will line that up right over top and pop that down into place. Then I can begin to adhere my images starting with this large tree branch and I have popped that up on some foam tape so that the green pattern in the background kind of maybe just looks like distant foliage. I did need to adjust that slightly higher so that I would have room for my sloth to hang down below that. So again, I've added foam tape to the back, so I'm peeling off the release papers, and then I can pop that down coming out from the right hand side. And I didn't tuck the edge of his branch underneath, but I am going to cover up the gap there. I'm going to put some squares of foam tape down and then glue my leaves right over top and press them down into place. It's a lot easier than trying to figure out exactly where to put the foam tape on the back of the leaf. So again, I'm going to repeat the same process for the second one. And I'm using one of the more brightly colored leaves mixed with one of the darker leaves. So I'll just tuck that darker one underneath the lighter one. And now it looks as if that tree branch is completely attached to whatever is over to the side there. I'm going to continue adding leaves, um, just filling in the scene, making it look like a nice rainforest. So I've added the leaf with the bite in it up to the top of the larger tree branch and then I'll add a lighter leaf with that as well. And then on that branch, I'm going to add the little bug. At first, I thought I would have him closest to the leaves, kind of coming out from them, but then I realized that the cupcake was going to have to be at too much of a slant to go after it, so I just switched the position of those two items so that the cupcake could be nice and flat, and then the bug is crawling up the branch. I'll add a tiny dot of glue to the bug's head so he can wear the little party hat. Just making sure that I have that placed just right. 
And then I'm also going to give the striped party hat to the sloth. So I'm going to repeat the same process by adding just a little tiny piece of foam tape into the gap where that wouldn't be flush. And then I can add some liquid glue to the rest of it so that it fits perfectly level. I'll add one more piece of foam tape into the bottom left corner so I could add my last little leaf. Just adhering that right over top, kind of tucked in behind the window. And then I'll grab my sentiment, which I trimmed down with an everyday sentiments banner. And I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back of that so that I can adhere it down right below the window. And my Tombow Mana was really running out, so I did replace it after the video with a new one. So I'll just line that up nice and straight and add that there. And the greens just really tie in with the pattern paper and the coloring. So I'll lift that up so you can see all the detail and give you another peek at the inside. And this card is actually going to be on the Lawn Fawn blog today. So if you'd like to hop over and check out any of the other details, you can find it there. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also ring the notification bell if you want to be sure that my videos always end up in your feed. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also be interested in. You can click on either one of those to check them out. I hope that you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.